here we are here's the front videos I promised so I'm going to be showing you what I do in the shed actually it's not a bad name that is it in the shed so we may run with that okay so the first thing I'm going to be doing is finishing off this knife this is a knife blade which I made last year it's a pattern welded blade which I made from uh, old saw blades and band saw blades all pattern welded together in the form of a feather pattern um, took, took a lot of work and it's a difficult process but I've enjoyed doing it and that hopefully is going to how it's going to look how it's going to end up that's the handle what I'm using there is a piece of bone or a piece of horn and uh, a piece of spalted beech timber underneath and I'm going to kind of wrap the bone around the timber and I may put a little spacer in there say black something black epoxy or some red epoxy I don't I don't know yet these are things I kind of make up as I go along because it all depends on how the thing looks um, this blade you probably can't see it on this light this light's pretty bad but there, there's a beautiful pattern in that it looks like a feather you don't know what feather pattern Damascus is you, there's plenty of video, videos on YouTube where you can see how it's made um, this is one I made last year which I still haven't quite finished and this is a feather pattern it's actually from the same billet as that knife I'll just get behind the camera then I can best sort of see there um, I think you can just make out the feather pattern in that this is a little folding knife I made from um, again from the same billet and it's got hippo tooth scales and it has Damascus bolsters on it I've just got to kneel that pin in to close it up I must get around to doing that actually and then uh, it's a lovely little knife and it's a, I love the blade so I'm going to be doing the same deep etch on this blade and uh, we'll see how it goes right so the bone I'm either going to use this camel bone it's a big thing I think I can just about get the profile out of that that I need can't go too far into the center because you can probably see this porous the way the, the grain inside inside the bone is quite porous and gnarly you don't want to cut into that because it ruins the shape of the bone it ruins the it ruins the surface of the bone and I want to do some scrimshaw on this it's either that the camel bone or this piece of antler I have and you can maybe see the wall thickness on that again there's not so much but I'm thinking that this is probably going to be the best out of the two I've got enough length I'm going to grind that smooth so I end up with something like that like that beautiful creamy finish then as I say I'm going to do some scrimshaw there's a bit of scrimshaw and I've already done so like a little practice piece I did on, a, on a, some scraps it's not very good but I'm still learning this but I've enjoyed doing it it's millions of tiny little dots with and you just rub ink into them like kind of like a inkjet printer so that's what I'm going to be doing with that <coughs> if all goes well then I'm going to have a nice knife at the end of it so I'm going to take you through the process of making this handle fitting the bone onto the timber work and putting all these little spaces in so it's bits of stainless steel bits bits of black material I don't know maybe put some brass in there I don't know yet to so say kind of make it up as I go along that stuff then I'll finally I'll etch the blade and we'll see how that turns out that's project number one which I'll be starting this week project number two will be finishing off this gun stock which I also started last year this is 
a walnut stock I've made for my air rifle which is a TX Air Arms TX200 and I carved this uh, buzzard taking the rabbit again I'll just see if I can just make sure I can get that in focus on the camera um, there we go I've also carved the, the hand grip obviously to fit my hand because the rifles for me and I ran along and I did this basket weave pattern in the front on the fore end and inlaid the front with a piece of uh, sycamore bell I think that is which will have a nice contrast with the walnut when it's been oiled kind of messed up the other side of this rifle again sorry there's some more uh, sycamore bill there this stock will go much darker when the oil's been put on as well I messed up the other side because on the other side I wanted to show the buzzard actually having caught the rabbit standing on the rabbit but what I did I made the buzzard too big so I couldn't get the relief out of the carving it would have meant I had to go too far into the stock which I didn't want to do so I had to chisel it off and I'll show you the mess I've made on that side now and that's what I'm left with that's why kind of why I put this gun away this stock away so I've, what I'm going to do to fix this I'm going to flatten off that area I'm going to go a bit further back into the stock and flatten that area off then I'm going to carve another a smaller buzzard on the rabbit and I'm going to fit it into a hole I've sort of done one here I know it's not very good this but it was just to try and get the scale it's still a bit big that so I'm going to do it a little bit smaller than that one and when I've mounted the buzzard and the rabbit into the stock I'm just going to run these sides down around the, around the outline of the buzzard uh, and then I'm going to stipple them in like I've done on the other side cheap pieces almost finished uh, this still needs stippling and finishing off and then there that's where I'm going to show you how I do the basket weave on this section there the front end still needs that piece of burl fitting and shaping like I've done on there uh, the action I've already let the action into the into there. I th I'm pretty sure I'd, I'd, I'd finished that, and it's it's done. So all that side really is finished. This is going to be hollowed out, and I'm just going to put a little silver disc on there with my name and my maker's mark on it, which is new. Um, and I'll show you the last rifle stock I made which is going to be a pair for this like I say that that, um, that stock is for my TX200 in 177 this stock here is one I made for my TX200 in 22 again this is this walnut is cut from the same plank of timber as that one and I've, did, I've done a dog carving the carving of my pointer on this one and it's, I know it's a bit tarty because it's got, uh, got all this silver wire inlaid into the stock and again along here and there's another basket weave pattern I did but I've improved on it slightly by cutting another two more lines into each weave which kind of looks nicer I think um, again the checkered, checkered hand grip laburnum set into the front there with a piece of silver wire and a black spacer and the same on the back laburnum I, I realised after I'd finished the rifle that it was really slippy on the shoulder with it being timber so I've had to sort of just put this bodge on for now which is just a piece of rubber and it, I'm going to fit that better when once that stock's finished I can then start to work on this rifle stock again I'm going to fit it a lot nicer than that and on this side again it's just the the checkering 
the silver wire inlay and the finished finished hand grip. There's the cheap piece, you can see it looks a lot nicer when it's actually been oiled and finished. There's about 30 coats of oil on there, hand rubbed in. It's looking a bit tatty at the moment because I've been using this for my shooting so that's what it's for, it's to be used. That's the maker's mark there uh, with my name and the date and my little running hair in the centre. Very nice. Okay. My next project after that is I'm going to be showing you how I make these fishing lures which I seem to be making forever. Uh, jerk baits. It's a very very again a tart handbag of a lure. That's got a gold foil finish um, and it's painted in epoxy. And I'm going to be showing how I make these. These are jerk baits, neutrally buoyant, weighted for pike fishing, and they kind of swim as you tap them. They kind of jerk and backwards and forwards through the through the water. Pike love them. I'm going to be showing you how I how I make these, how I weight them, and finish them. There's a few examples here. That's one in Sycamore with some walnut inlays to sort of simulate a perch. There's uh, one in a foil pattern which is just kitchen foil pressed into a sort of scale pattern and then overlaid again with epoxy. Um, that's, that's an oak and sycamore one. And there's a little one in scale pattern with a scale pattern on just airbrushed into it. I'll show you how I do this as well. Pipe pattern on the hog. Show you how I make this and how it performs and why it works the way it does. And that's about it really, I think. Yeah. So project one will be to get this knife sorted out. To get uh, this piece of timber let into there, there's the timber by the way, it's a piece of spalted beech which was an old beech tree root I found somewhere lying around, I can't remember where now, I've had a few years, it's now dried out, it's quite hard that piece, the timber um, looks really nice when it's finished, that's, that's a piece of the same timber there and another little knife I made, and you can see the way the colour changes when it gets the oil onto it. Really nice. So that should look really, really, really good against sort of the bone colour. Well, I'm hoping it will anyway. So yeah, we'll get cracking on that this week and uh, I'll do an update and I will show how I fit this to that. I'll drill it through. Um, how I build up the spaces and we'll see how it goes. Okay guys, so if you like, please like and if you like what I'm doing, please subscribe then. I know that I'm not talking to myself and I'll carry on doing the updates for you. Okay, see you soon.